With all this new information coming out in Uvalde and parents there demanding answers, joining me tonight is Texas State Senator Roland Gutierrez, who represents this community. Senator, Mayor McLaughlin in Uvalde calls this a cover-up. Do you agree? Well, I think it's clear. I mean, you know, we can look at what happened in Chicago in the last few days in Highland Park. A direct, stark contrast to what happened in Texas. We get a briefing every 30 minutes for the last several days now. In Texas, we got two briefings in a week, and that was it. And then we were told we weren't going to get any further information. Our shooter is dead. Our shooter is dead. Let's be really clear. What are we investigating? The parents of these children, the parents of the injured children are exposed expecting answers, and they want answers now. The mayor and myself and others in the community are getting demands from our constituents, and we're doing the very best we can. But right now, the people that are doing the this so-called investigation are the ones that are doing this cover-up, and that's the Department of Public Safety, and that's this district attorney's office. Let's face it, they're not going to indict anybody. You think, okay, so in your view, if I'm understanding you right, the slow walking is to cover for them themselves at the state police and the DA? Listen, I, I think that there's errors, there's human errors, there are systemic failures at every level, at every level of law enforcement. The ISD cops, the local cops, the sheriff's office, the Texas Department of Public Safety, even the Bortec people that kind of waited in mass before making the decision to go in. What we have here is a systemic failure and a failure to communicate amongst law enforcement, among many other things. So let's not kid ourselves as to what happened here on May 24th. Law enforcement did not have command and control at any level. And they want to point to the local cop that's used to breaking up the cafeteria fight and saying it's his fault. What happened on May 24th is unfortunately now the keystone example of what not to do in a mass shooting. Mm -hmm. Mass shootings last three minutes. This one lasted an hour and 18 minutes. I see. Um, the DA, the, you said they will never bring charges against, um, I guess, anybody. Do you think that in their mind, if they wait long enough, the parents will just kind of back down people forget because this does not strike me as a case that people are going to forget look i could be wrong she could go off and indict arredondo or some other officers but at the end of the day that's really what she's talking about are you going to indict all those officers are you going to indict the 12 dps troopers that were in the hallway that took no orders from arredondo and that was clear from my cross-examination of steve mccraw in the texas senate so if there was no communications from Arredondos to other agencies, then how is he the, the incident commander? If all of the communications failures that didn't work, then how is he the incident commander? How does he communicate that? We are now learning that the governor of the state of Texas received as, back, as far back as 2015 pleas from this community to help them repair their radio systems that we know didn't work. And so is he at fault? Should he be indicted? We have systemic failure in Uvalde. We need all of the answers so that we policymakers can figure it out into the future, so that we can solve the problems into the future. Let's peel the Band-Aid off, uh, peel some of the layers back here. The report says in part, quote, if officers had moved in per their training, and this is the quote, there would have been a high probability that some of the officers would have been shot or even killed. However, the officers also likely would have been able to stop the attacker and focus on getting immediate medical care to the wounded. Senator, a lot of the families feel people died, children, a teacher who would have otherwise lived. What are your thoughts on that? Well, we know that Evan Medellis bled out on the way to the hospital. We know that another little girl had one single bullet shoot uh, wound through the back of her, through her back. She likely bled out. We know that another child likely bled out. I mean, that's the harsh reality here. Three or four children, three or four lives might have been saved. And we're never going to know that truth. But we clearly know that people failed. Uh, for my part, I'd rather people stop pointing fingers at any one person and understand that their system failed them. Uvalde's mayor claims he is 
completely in the dark, pitch black. At a city council meeting recently, parents asked him, who is running this investigation? Here's what he said. I've got nothing. I can't even tell you, with, look anybody in the eye in here and tell you who's in charge of this investigation, because I don't know. Senator, we know every word President Trump said in his private dining room on January 6th. How can we not know in real time who's investigating this attack on May 24th in Uvalde? And that's where we are today. You've got a district attorney who says that, that she's doing an investigation, that she's not doing an investigation. We've got DPS troopers that, that Steve McCraw that tells me directly that he's been ordered not to communicate information to me. Then we find out she's not doing an investigation. Then she says she's doing it for the benefit of the families. You know, the families want the answers now. They have the answers. We have all the technology. We have the body cams. We know who was in the hallway. We know that nobody decided to make the right decision and go into that room. Finally, Senator, your constituents, your neighbors, uh, the grieving families, they are at their wits end, which I know you've heard about in depth. And it's heartbreaking. Uh, and they want their local leaders to know it, of course, as well. They said this the other day. Why is it that children are calling 911 and you can't tell where these calls are coming from, that y'all didn't get it? What if it was your kid? I, yeah. you, want, you can't say nothing. I can't. No, you right. can't. Senator, you hold power, be it official or just the bully pulpit. How are you making sure they get answers and they get the resources that are, are promised to them? So we filed a lawsuit against the Department of Public Safety. We should be in court on the week of the 18th to get some more information for these families. Uh, and so far as resources, my myself and the, the mayor have asked the governor's office to redirect who's handling the trauma money as well as the victim's assistance fund monies. Uh, you know, we clearly shouldn't have them in the hands of the district attorney's office who's doing this investigation. And so, because there's a conflict there. And so we're going to keep working for families. We're going to keep working to try to get them the answers that they need. And so far as the bully pulpit is concerned, I'm going to be reaching out to my colleagues in Senate and letting them know exactly what went wrong here. We don't need to be spending $50, billion, $50 million in ballistic shields that was done last week. We need about $15 million to fix the broken radio system that Steve McCraw acknowledged is broken, that Greg Abbott knew about that was broken for so many years and did nothing to fix. 2022, those 911 calls never even made it into that building. Texas State Senator Roland Gutierrez, you have been advocating tirelessly and publicly for your friends, neighbors, constituents. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you.